this video I'd like to talk about the relationship between your apparent solar time and your longitude. Uh, if you haven't seen my video about the equation of time, if you're not 100% sure about what the equation of time is, I suggest you watch that first. Okay, so imagine there are three people. There's Wendy, who lives in Oxford, and there's Gordon, who lives in Greenwich, and there's Eric, who lives in Norwich. And all three of them have a sundial, and one day they all go out at exactly the same time and they look at their sundials and Gordon, who lives in Greenwich, his sundial says it's 12 o'clock, so his apparent solar time is 12 o'clock. At exactly the same time, Eric's apparent solar time is about 5 past 12. And Wendy's solar time in Oxford is about 11.55. So clearly your apparent solar time depends on your longitude. Basically, the further east you are, then because the Earth is rotating, the further east you are and the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west, so think of it, if you're further east, then you'll see the sun, so it'll be morning before somebody who lives west of you. I remember they say Japan is the land of the rising sun, and it's in the far east. So the far east is the land of the rising sun. The further east you are, you see the sun sooner. So that means that if I am here, and my apparent solar time is let's say midday, then if you are east of me, then your midday will have been, I don't know, 5, 10, 15 minutes ago. So your apparent solar time will be later than me, whereas if you live west of me, then your apparent solar time will be before me, because you won't have seen the sun yet. For you it's still night time, you're waiting for sunrise. If we can calculate the difference between your apparent solar time and the apparent solar time in Greenwich, we can work out your longitude. And we can do this, and this is one of the pieces of coursework that you can do, and I do suggest you do it because it's very straightforward, it's very easy to do, is the, the shadow stick experiment. If you put a, a stick in the ground and you measure the length of its shadow throughout the course of a day or you don't have to do that you just do it kind of from about half an hour before midday to half an hour after midday every five minutes and plot a graph of the length of the shadow against time you can find out at what time GMT Greenwich Mean Time your local noon happens. In other words, at what time GMT is your apparent solar time equal to 12 o'clock? First of all, to work out your longitude, what you need to do is to take the equation of time into account uh, and work out your mean solar time. So you remember the equation the equation of time is your apparent solar time minus your mean solar time. Rearranging this equation, the, your mean solar time is going to be your apparent solar time minus the equation of time. You'll need to know the equation of time on the particular day that you do the experiment. You can look that up on the internet. There's several websites where you can look up the equation of time on any particular day throughout the year. When the shadow is shortest, your apparent solar time is 12 o'clock.
then if you know your equation of time, you can work out your mean solar time. If you know your mean solar time and you know Greenwich mean time, the first thing is, if your mean solar time is ahead of Greenwich mean time, that means you live east of Greenwich, for reasons I spoke about a couple of minutes ago. If your mean solar time is behind Greenwich mean time, then that means you live west of Greenwich. The difference between them in minutes, to work out your longitude, every four minutes is equivalent to one degree of longitude. So if the difference between GMT and your mean solar time is four minutes, that means your longitude is one degree, either east or west, depending on whether it's ahead or behind. Why four minutes? Well, there's 24 hours in the day. There are 60 minutes in an hour. Do the math. 24 times 60 and then divide that by 360 and what do you get? Do the math. I've put a couple of kind of exam question example kind of things uh, and also if you study them and they would, if you are doing the shadow stick experiment for your coursework, help you to with the calculation. Okay, so uh, good luck with that. I do recommend you do it because it's a very straightforward one to do. Thank you. Robo, excuse me, Robo. Any special message for all the kids watching at home? Wow. <laughs> Stay out of trouble. Stay out of trouble. Stay out of trouble.